Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Tuplex. Before we start today, I want to announce the winner of the Factorio license giveaway. Uh, I did a drawing using commentpicker.com, uh, which will randomly select a comment from a YouTube video or a Facebook post or whatever you have there. So um, that way it was as random as I know how to make it. And the winner is, and excuse me if I don't pronounce this correctly, but I think it's pronounced Wukash Kapitsa, or maybe it's Lukas Kapika. I don't know. I was looking up Polish pronunciations because it looks like a, a Polish name to me. But in any case, if I pronounced your name wrong, I do apologize, and please let me know the correct way to do it. So um, I will send you a message via YouTube, or you can send me a message via YouTube. Uh, just let me know your Steam account name and I will get that license out to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for everybody for participating in the drawing. Uh, and we'll do another one when I hit 4,000 subscribers. Um, my mouse is acting a little funny because uh, the other day I was sitting at the computer and talking to my wife and we were both enjoying a cold beer. And she knocked her glass of beer over and it spilled <laughs> all over my mouse and the desk and onto the floor and everything else. So um, it was a shame to waste beer like that, first of all, but we did manage to get everything cleaned up. But um, I think some of the beer got inside my mouse and sometimes the clicking doesn't work properly. Let's see. Yeah, it's okay now. If I really push on it, it works okay. Um, I had some comment um, after the last video about the pipes on this side, because as you can see, I do not have a continuous pipeline all the way down this side of the turbines. Um, and there's not enough room to put an underground pipe and a power pole here. Now, I've used this design in the past and it's never been a problem. But it does seem like it's not quite right in this way. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll just make some adjustment. I'll basically move, what I can do is wherever this power pole has to go, I can add an extra space and that way I'll be able to put an underground pipe with the power pole in between. So let me show what I mean. So I'll just disconnect this side temporarily. Uh, let me pick all of this up. Yeah, yeah, see that's what I mean. Sometimes it, uh, I go to click and I lose the state of my mouse button. I'm gonna have to replace it, I think. Okay, so if I leave one space and then we'll see how many more I can get. Then this way I can put an underground pipe and still have room for the power pole. Yeah, and in this case, I am I think I'm only gonna be able to cover two. Okay, well it's still more than I could do if I used regular power poles. Actually, if I did that. No, it's better to put it in the middle. That way I can cover the turbines that are gonna go on this side too. All right, so let's just do that, and then I'll put the light there. Do that. And then I think I'm basically just going to duplicate that. Two, four, six, eight. All right, so let's... Actually, I'll copy this side. And this way I can tile it. Yeah, you know what, maybe... Yeah, so it takes up, it takes up a little more vertical space. Uh, but that's not really a big, not really a big problem because we're already, we're already saving a lot of space over the original design by having, um, by using the Mark IIs instead of Mark Ones. Okay, so now we have a continuous pipeline of steam. Now the steam will pass from one side of the turbine to another if it doesn't all get used. And, and that's why we only need to connect 
one of the pipes to the storage tank. Um, so let me see what happens if I replace these with standard power poles. I might, I might still get the right amount of coverage. Yeah, that pretty much works. I just need to add one more at the end. Yeah, and then I can use Mark 1s. In fact, let's put that there to be consistent. Okay. And I'll put... I'll put a power pole there, and I'll put one there, and a light. Now, in, in the original design, this has multiple heat pipes coming off of these reactors. Um, I don't know that that's really necessary. I don't. I don't think the heat pipes have a capacity <clears throat> for how much heat they can transmit. Um, but we can always, you know, we can always add a second set of heat pipes if we have to. And if we really have to, I can find another place to put the power poles and, and get three heat pipes out uh, on each side. But I'm going to try just to have one heat pipe feeding all the heat exchangers and see if that's good enough. Okay, so let's make the same change over on this side. Um, now here I'm going to have to Let's see. Let me check something here. 16. Okay. Yeah, all 16 are connected to the main power grid. All right. And so I'll leave the first two and then I'll pick up all the rest. Actually, let's just use regular power pole. There we go. And then we'll do that. Put an underground there, underground there. One, two. Connect all of that. Copy this, and we'll just tile that down. And remove that, remove that, put that there. Okay. Now, another useful tip that I got is that with the Nixie tubes, uh, apparently you only need to connect to the least significant digit. Um, which in this case is the one farthest to the right. And I had been told that once before, but I had forgotten which one you have to connect to. Okay, but we can see that it, it works even if I only connect to the, uh, to the Nixie tube on the right. Okay, well this looks pretty good, and uh, I, feel, I feel better about having a continuous pipeline all the way down both sides. Um, now I need to connect the steam signal again. There we go. Okay, so I've got fuel inserted uh, and we don't need any more because we've got lots of steam. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. And uh, this should last us for quite a long time before we're going to need any more power. Um, as you can see here, we've got quite a lot of capacity. Um, now, one thing I would like to do is 
get a signal on the network that can come over to our steam power here so that if I have fuel available, we won't, we won't make any steam power. Uh, cause like I mentioned last time, uh, the game tries to balance the multiple power sources. Um, I think if you have solar, I think it always prioritizes solar over everything else. But when you have nuclear and steam power, you end up getting a little bit of a little bit of both. And uh, I don't really want that. What I would prefer is just to use all nuclear power, except when I don't have any fuel available, and then use steam power as a backup. So in order to do that, we have to we have to have some way to know if we're making electricity with the nuclear power. And as far as I know, or not only that, but we have to know if we're making enough electricity. So I think the best way to do that is to have is to have an accumulator connected to nuclear power. And if the, accumula if the accumulator charge drops, then we know that nuclear is not making enough power by itself. So as long as the accumulator has a charge, or let's say over a 50% charge, then we can shut off the steam power. And then if the charge drops, we turn on the steam power. Yeah, and I think that's really all that we need to do. I think it's ought to be that simple. So uh, we can make an accumulator with batteries, and I'm pretty sure we do have batteries. Oh, more uranium. That's awesome. Well, it's only a thousand. That's not going to last very long. But still, that's good. Oh, the other thing that I want to do is. I I want to set this up so that I only use uranium to make more fuel cells if I don't have any fuel cells. Okay, so I'm going to set this to enable um, if nuclear fuel cells equals zero. Then I'll enable this inserter that will create more fuel cells. Um, the reason for that is because I want to start. I want to start saving uranium to do the Covarex enrichment process. Um, because to get that going, you need. You essentially need forty pieces of uranium two thirty five. So as you can see there. Um, when you run that process, you take 40 uranium-235 and 5 238, which we have an abundance of, and then you get 41 235 and 2 uranium-238. So it basically allows you to convert three uranium-238s into one uranium-235, but you need 40 just to get started. So I want to accumulate as much uranium as I can so that I can get at least 40 on hand to use for that process. Because once you get that process going, you can, you're essentially making as much fuel as you could ever want. <clears throat> okay, so let's, uh, let's work on that signal to turn off the steam power. And then we'll also be working on setting up the reprocessing of the spent uranium fuel cells. That was the other thing I wanted to get done in this episode. And in case anyone is wondering, the beer that got spilled on my mouse is Elysian Space Dust IPA. Um, if you like hoppy beers, I highly recommend it. It's very tasty. Of course, this only applies 
to those of you who are of a legal age to drink. All right, um, batteries. That's what I need. And I'm pretty sure we make them over here on the other side of the map. By the time I get to a place where I can use my car, I'm gonna be pretty much there already. All right, see if I can avoid hitting anything. All right, and I'm pretty sure I have batteries over here somewhere. Yeah, here they are. Okay, how many do I need? Only five. Okay, that was easy enough. Um, I think I'll make four. I don't know if it. I don't know if it matters very much if I have more than one, but I know that one one accumulator will will deplete very quickly. Okay, so got rid of the extra batteries. Uh, what is our problem over here? No copper. Huh. Why don't I have any copper? Oh, okay. I ran out of copper ore, which I was using to make copper internally. Okay, so we have to start using this copper. Um, why don't we go fix that quickly? That won't take long. Okay, so we can pick up all of that. We can pick up all of that. Um, I don't know if I need that power pole or not. Yeah, I suppose I do. Oh, no I don't. This wasn't doing anything anyway. Okay, and I'm gonna auto trash Small electric poles. Don't plan to use those anymore. And we can get rid of all of this too. copper ingots. I don't need those either, really. Alright, so now all we need to do is start putting these copper plates on a belt. And uh, I might as well use a red belt. Okay, let's make that one a near inserter. There we go. That way we get both sides of the belt going. Um, okay, and that needs to go right there. Okay, so now we will start using copper that we've been making over here. Up until now, we haven't really been using it. But it'll be good to start using some of the ore that um, that we've gotten from the sapphirite over there. Okay, and that explains why my science research stopped. Okay, so let's go now and finish.
finish our other stuff. This is not running either. Actually, I don't care too much about the wood anymore. But why is this not running? No saline? Huh. Okay. Well, that's something else I'll have to check out. Although I don't know if I really... I don't know if I really need that anymore, to be honest. Um, I do need the ferric chloride. But I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine with that, actually. This was just to make... Okay, well, yeah, I guess I will need it because I need that to make the chlorine and the hydrogen for the hydrogen chloride. So even if I don't care if I'm making uh, cellulose paste anymore, I do care that I'm making hydrogen and chlorine. Okay, so where is the saline coming from? It's coming from way over here. Oh, okay. That was coming from our Coke pellet production, which I'm barely using anymore. And actually, that's that also is going to be reducing the amount of sulfuric wastewater that I get, which is hurting me in some ways. So maybe, maybe I'm better off prioritizing the Coke pellets over the wood blocks. I think I am. Because I need acid. And I need saline water. So let me go make that adjustment as well. And we'll get to this accumulator thing here. <laughs> when we get a chance. No, actually, let's back up. I don't have to do it there. I have to do it over here. Whoops. Sorry. Why are my construction robots not doing that? That's weird. Shouldn't my construction robots be repairing automatically? Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure why they why they don't do that. What is this for? Nothing. Okay. Uh, so how did I have this set up? Input priority on the left. This is input priority on the left. And this is neither. Oh, okay. It was here. Right. So I think what I want to do is switch these so that this runs when there's no coke pellets. So I want this to enable when coke pellets are less than, I don't know, let's say four. So even if there's a partial belt, it'll let some through. And then these I set to read contents, and hold.
Okay. Yeah, so now we'll start to use coke pellets again. And that ought to, yeah, that ought to get some saline being made. Yep, there it is. And more of that valuable sulfuric wastewater. Which is worth more than gold, it seems like. Okay. All right, so we got some research finished. Uh, so we're done with logistics slots. Um, can't really do any of those. Let's do logistics four. Okay, so I think now, I think now we can do our steam power thing. So I'll just, oh no, actually I want to take my train. That's farther than, farther than, I, uh, excuse me, farther than I thought. All right, so let's just bring the train over and we'll hop on here. <clears throat> of course now I'm going to turn it off because I have nuclear power so maybe I don't want to do this well let's set it up and we can always we can always change the conditions so that it's always enabled if we want to but I mean I've got plenty of coal we still have 10 million over here, so we're not using up very much coal. Um, I've got infinite coal here, and when I need more, there's another 21 million there. So if I just continue to, you know, if I continue to run everything off of coal, it wouldn't really be such a bad thing. But let's set it up anyway so that I can take advantage of that when the time comes. Right, I've got two uranium. Ugh, it's gonna take a while to get the 40. I probably should have set that up before I made all those. Okay, so let's set up our accumulators. I think I'll just put them there. Okay, and then what I want to do is, do I want to use the red or the green? Let's use, I'll use the red wire. All right, so we can see that signal that says A is equal to 100. So if I put it here, then pretty much everywhere in the base, I'll be able to access that signal. So A, 100 just means that the accumulators are charged 100%. Um, so we can use that signal to turn off steam, and then if we ever reach a point where this is not making enough power, it'll start taking charge out of the accumulators. And when the charge drops, then we can turn on the steam power. And the way that I like to turn the power on and off over there is not by using a switch on the power output, but by turning the water pumps on and off. Um, and the reason I like to do it that way is because if you have a switch, then what happens is it, it ends up just flickering on and off very quickly because it, because most of the time you're going to reach a state where you have enough, and then it, you have enough power, then it shuts it off, and then you don't have enough power, it turns it back on, and so on and so forth. So if if instead you turn the pumps on and off, it there's 
it adds some lag into the responsiveness of the switching on and off so that it's not oscillating back and forth really quickly. It'll take a little bit of time to get going, start making steam, and then and then if it turns off again, it'll take a little bit of time to shut down. So it, it just kind of smooths out your power production curve. Okay, I should have been bringing that signal over here. So I need to get the signal up to where the water pumps are, which is way up here. Just trying to see. I could run it over here. That seems like a good place to do it. So we grab our red wire, and we can just run that over. And then I'll just use a blueprint here to continue to copy that. it stays connected to there so that I can reach with my signal wire. Will that reach? Nope. Alright, let's see how far it'll go. Uh, just past there. So let's see if that'll reach. Nope. All right. All right, and then I'll need another pole. Oh, okay, I can do it this way. So then we can set the pumps to enable when A is less than or equal to 50, let's say. So now we can see that the pumps have turned off. So there's no more water in the pipes. Now the the boilers still have a little bit of water in there. Um, some of them do, but now you can see that they're running out. Eventually the steam will turn off like it has over here. And so if we look now, we'll start to see this uh, steam power production go down and yeah, there it goes. Okay, so now we're running exclusively on nuclear power. But as I said, when we do that, I'm going to stop consuming carbon. or coke pellets, I mean. So I'm just trying to think of how I can enable or disable this. Well, 
Here's one thing I could do. I could take a constant combinator. Oh, A less than or equal to zero. No, I wanted 50, not zero. There we go. Okay, less than or equal to 50. So what I could do here is I could put a signal of A minus 100. Right, and then it'll run the steam power no matter what. And we'll use less nuclear fuel this way too. So then if I get to the point where I decide I don't want to use, I don't want to use this anymore, then I can just remove this combinator or just clear the signal. Um, and that way the, the A signal will actually matter. <clears throat> and then we can reactivate that, uh, that switching again. Okay. Right. So this way I'll get, I'll get my wastewater. Um, now the wastewater is coming down here and that's all being barreled and not being used right now, apparently. I've got quite a lot of it here. A thousand. Okay, so let's take a look at my waste processing and see how we're doing on acid. I don't have any. Okay, that's picking up. Is there a delivery coming? Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me turn on my signals again. Or my messages, I mean. For logistic train network. So I can see if it's... Let's see, was it per player? No? No? Maybe it's down on the bottom. Yeah, there we go. Let's put it on notifications. Uh, that way I'll be able to see what is getting scheduled. But nothing's coming here, obviously. And I have a lot of wastewater in here. All right, so where else am I making wastewater? Um, I'm not making any here, although we had talked about doing that. Okay, there's some more. All right, so maybe, maybe we're getting enough wastewater from other places that we don't need to bring it in from both. Refining. Okay. Yeah, looks like we've got a bit here. Where's the sulfuric? Is it this one? Yeah, that's the sulfuric wastewater. Okay. Yeah, I've got quite a lot there. Looks like I have more there than I do at the main base. So, um, yeah, so apparently the sulfuric wastewater uh, supply is not really an issue right now. Um, but in any case, I do need to make acid here in the main base. Um, so if we have too much of it, it'll get clarified. And it's not really costing us anything because, again, we have plenty of coal um, and other things that are making the wastewater. So we might as well just maximize it. And on top of that, I've mentioned before that I want to 
set up something to start making a lot more acid than I have been. So, um, so I'm sure we'll be thankful for the extra wastewater when that happens. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thanks again for watching everybody. Appreciate it as always. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.